Okay. Uh, I, I presume none of you have ever gone through a lean coffee session before, right? So I'm going to walk through some of the basic rules first. The lean coffee is what I used to do when I was running software teams. We use it to facilitate agendaless meeting, meaning that it's not me, the boss or the manager, driving the agenda for the meeting, but you all. So, so, so the yeah, good. So is here. So is here. So the content of the meeting is strictly driven by you all. You all decide what you want to talk, how long you want to talk, right? Okay. Ah, uh, good. You can you can introduce yourself. And then buy everybody a round of coffee. Sorry, that's public. I chew on the chew here. Let me think. And that's it. That's it. Alright. <laughs> Alright, how it works is you will need to take one of these notepads. You can speed it around and so on. You need to take a marker pen, of course, inside, inside the boxes. And the first thing you do is you write down what do you want to talk about what you want to discuss and what you may want to share. The only scope is that it should be related to board game design and Malaysia. It can be anything. Right? So you all write simultaneously on this piece of paper and when you are done, come and stick it on this side here. So I will probably expect a bunch of sticky notes here. I'll give you probably two or three minutes, it doesn't be too long, right? A bunch of sticky notes here. Then we will, each of us, vote on the topics here. So we will get like, I think since there are about six or seven of us, we will vote three times on which topic we wanted to talk about. We rank them by the highest vote, so that means that it's a topic most people want to talk about, to the lowest vote. And we talk one topic at a time. And when we deal with a topic, How long we talk on a topic a day depends on you guys. So the first session will be five minutes. Right? You, you go around and talk, right? And when the five minutes is up, we do a Roman walk. You know what a Roman walk is, right? Down. That's all, right? So if there is more up, meaning that you want to continue the topic, we get another three minutes. If everybody, for whatever reason, the topic is done. Tell us more about your space. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, uh, I think part of the reason is that we, we use the game at the shop. I suppose in the recent two years, the, the stocks that we have are made and kind of overrun. games how to promote board game hobby to school and college students <laughs> how do you know your game is ready how to promote local board game in Malaysia on gamer community and normal community gamer community is not normal uh, gamer yeah, means those who uh, 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 Having a big impact on mar marketing or marketing okay. and also awareness interesting. 
How long is game duration for the non-gamer market? Yeah. What do you think is that duration? Yeah. Production cost for board game? Best marketing strategy for board game in Malaysia? <laughs> I suppose that's a million dollar question, right? <laughs> game publisher in Malaysia, right? Uh, card game mechanism? Mini game design, as in education, workshops, I presume you mean. Right? Alright, any clarifications? Now, if not, what I want you to do is that you got about six, seven people, you get three votes. Take the marker pen again, put three dots on the cards that you want to talk about. Okay, you have three dots, three dots, including you. Ah, okay. yeah? <laughs> you can put all the three dots on the same card if you want to, yeah? If you die, die, you want to talk about the card, yeah? <laughs> so, so you can spread them out if you want to. Oh, you dogs, right? a game, right? Yep, so go. A few moments later. Alright. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna reorganize the card according to the highest mode. There's a tie on these two cards. Oh, there are three cards and I have a three though. So from experience, I'll probably say that this tree will be talked about this. Those below will probably not get there, yeah. Unless you are here until 7 p.m. Okay, so we are going to move the first card. How to encourage people to play test game and how do you form and maintain a presume? Regular play test groups. Any questions on the topic first before I start the timer? How long is it? Five minutes. The first five session minutes. is five minutes. Subsequent one, three minutes each. Okay, let's go. It is an open discussion, right? It's not me talking, yeah? You have five minutes for now. So we start already. Yeah, 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 sorry. Okay. Anybody, can, Anybody can, can, can talk about it, yeah? So, so it's three go all, yeah? So, yeah. So basically, on, if you don't know, TTGDMY as Kwami, we run monthly alpha meets for, for board game designers to uh, play each other's games. Uh, the next one is next week. Uh, I will not be part of that because I have a work event, but uh, the way I run it is try to be as minimal com uh, minimal commitment on my end. So every at the, after every alpha meet, I will just make a community post saying that whoever wants to, whichever whoever has a game to uh, to test or want to come, uh, please raise your hand. Please indicate this post now. Then I'll create a Facebook group. They all, everybody who's in the Facebook group, uh, sorry, not Facebook group, uh, Facebook chat group. Then whoever is in the chat group, uh, if they all want to come, uh, they all will decide what day, what place. So uh, last month it was here. Next. Uh, to next week will be at uh, FND uh, FND FND Mind Sport FND yeah FND FND <laughs> okay so sure, go so that one is really his own thing no, no, so. <laughs> okay yeah, FND if you're listening yeah, 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 yeah okay, okay. Um, uh, but on the second thing uh, regular play testers um, outside of the game outside of the designers my experience is that uh, it can be two things uh, number one if you are uh, uh, if you are edu if you are coming from a from a particular background and you're designing in that space, right? For example, your education, um, like maybe what the good one is, I think is probably reflex. Like they already have like a bunch of people who are already interested in the subject that you can continually um, tap up, tap upon. What's so, the name? Uh, reflex. Oh, yeah. So game itself, right? Have you seen reflex? Yeah. yeah. So. Um, <laughs> So if you are if, if you are already thematically there in a particular uh, space, right? Uh, not just designing games for the sake of just designing games, then you can tap upon that community to, to be reliable. Uh, and then they they themselves also have a, a stake in it. Uh, let's say I'm a conserva uh, marine conservationist. I also want people to know about marine conservation. So I have a stake in helping you uh, come up with a good game. So that is one way. Uh, secondly, if that is you have a big company and you have a big uh, medium-sized company and you have a following so the follow your following is always very uh, this is a bit more advanced law so Hyrie has done this a little bit already he's got a couple of fanboys always ready to play, play test his games on 
So that's one way also. If you uh, if you have a, a, otherwise, I would recommend that if you are if you go to regular board game meetups, you make friends there, and then once in a while you push your games, and then you start building from there. Uh, another way also is I've seen some people do also online the especially RPGs is that you go into uh, online spaces. Uh, although the feeling is very very different now, uh, but there is pros and cons of that. Number one is that you can be, you can be more international. Uh, but number two, but the cons is that like it's not it doesn't feel nice as a board game uh, because you don't get to really you, you are interacting, but it doesn't feel the same thing as board games. So yes, that's my two cents on it. Anyone else questions? Errors. Keep going. Yeah, so I just like to add um, because the game I'm designing is a about an hour long sort of game based game, right? It's a bit harder to find people who are willing to test out the game is that long. So I tried bringing it to my regular play. I mean, my regular meetups, and I think there's a lot of hesitance trying to to play test the game is rough, right? And asking them for an hour of their time to play a game, which is which you don't know whether it will work or not. So that for me is a bit of a problem. Like how do you encourage people to play this game? Because usually when you go for meetups like uh, GPG, DNY, I'm not going to get to play this once. And although the feedback is great, but I feel like, you know, I need it to be more, I need to get more ready to play this game. I also need to, to cultivate a sort of group of people who are also willing to test similar weights of your games. Because I do realize that, at least you get GPG, DNY, uh, the crowd is more, looking more towards a bit shorter games and the games. Well, right, so that's for me. There's a problem. But to go to a group which plays those sort of games, that are less made to play those games, right? Or if I go to a crowd which does play those games, it's not as frequent, and usually the game skills are a little bit lighter than that. Right, so for me, that's why I was asking, how do I then encourage people to play those play those these games? So yeah, so these are stats that we should be facing right now. How how many are doing uh, longer than? Lighter games like mediums. Well, right now, most people, uh, the ones at least the ones that go to market, right, uh, tend to be lighter games. Yeah, like, and you know, oh, okay. So how far is this with you? Okay, so we're gonna have a quick Roman vote. Yes means we continue. This means we move to the next topic, right? So do it simultaneously. All right, one, two, three. Okay, so we have a signal to continue. So I'm gonna take you five minutes, uh, three minutes, and maybe just move five minutes since we have. Okay, uh, again, we may continue. Well, um, so I would say, because my game is also, my flagship game at the very least is also <laughs> longer, right? So okay. I would say, I I don't really have super regular play testers. Uh, I think the longest one person has ever played is three or four, man. Three, three or four games. Um, that, but so what you need to do is, uh, at the very least, I was asking non gamers. Uh, relatively fresh crowd each time, at least two new players, um, and then uh, well, uh, uh, try to give them small incentives like <laughs> drinks and stuff like that. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Basically, you bribe them to come down. Let's get the uh, Because they are doing your favor, so you at least make it easy on them. Um, so that one have, I, I guess that one have to depend a bit on personal skill. Though. I the, the other thing that I'm not. Uh, or maybe I'm not uh, familiar with you guys enough is that do you test two different groups of people? Because if you are testing just among gamers or designers, you have a blind spot. Right? Uh, do you have do you test two different groups at different stages of the game? Maybe when the game is very, very early alpha stage, you actually need more designers and gamers because they can tell you what to add on to your game and so on and so forth, right? But as the game goes in closer to production, uh, you want a different set of people to test. You don't want the game designer and someone who has been seeing a game for so long, they will tell you the game is okay. But then when you hit the market, no one buys, right? <laughs> Except for the game the designer who tested, your friends who tested the game, right? So you, I think that is also another challenge, right? So that relates to forming test groups. Yeah? Do we have test groups and so on? And I think I relate to your question. Medium heavy games are hard to test. Because one game takes three hours to play or whatever, no one has the time to play. If, if you only play your game three, four times, there's not testing like this. <laughs> At best it's a playthrough, right? Right? You haven't even tested anything. So so I think medium game is a challenge. 
my my thinking is uh, this is my uh, idea. I don't know whether we can work or not. Uh, for those schemes uh, already, I mean halfway. Of course, I'm uh, not in the production yet, but already halfway there, we have some, you know, uh, intention to push further. Uh, I think uh, my I have one idea is uh, work together with the uh, Bokim Cafe, you know, the nearby Bokim Cafe, because you cannot go too far away. Also, uh, work together with Bokim Cafe and. Uh, to ask them to help because working there normally there's a regular Saturday, Sunday there's a really regular coming, right? So you uh, ask them to form maybe, uh, of course, pay them uh, uh, one or two hour uh, section. Ask them, the, the current uh, customer who already come for pay section, to uh, participate in the pay test. Mean you have booked certain time, uh, or half a day or three hour, four hour. Uh, mean for, for you have a food table. So that uh, the board team uh, cafe also helping you. To promote on the page that uh, there's a coming uh, uh, working uh, local one uh, in progress of design uh, need a pay test so I encourage to uh, join uh, on Saturday Sunday uh, then uh, maybe that one uh, you know can work together with working cafe to put further uh, for those games which already in the halfway uh, for those games like it's the beginning one maybe you have to have uh, like a gen group uh, the design group to, to pay test to get more input to improve it first uh. Uh, both the uh, halfway one we can we can go inside uh, to have a uh, you know, uh, weekly or two weeks one time uh, play test. Okay, and uh, just to add on, just to get that, obviously we have our funny, uh, so there's already a, a play test group, so to speak, yeah. right? So. Any thoughts? No? If not, then we are probably going to close the topic. So, okay. say hi. Suddenly, suddenly, editor. Suddenly, some guy came in. Yeah. Sign up as a play tester. <laughs> Alright, so we are going to move this topic to done. We're going to move to the next topic. Okay. Game publisher. Who wrote this? You can, you can start the conversation. Uh, let me find it. Who wrote the publisher? Yeah, you, you can initiate the conversation first, yeah. Because I'm sure you have other questions or whatever. Alright, this one Alright. Technically, there's probably only one game publisher in Malaysia. Um, or I would rather say, who does publish games as Orangutan games? You have not heard of them. Ah, <laughs> right. uh, okay. So, what's to say? Orangutan. Yeah, Orangutan. Uh, yeah, but they they are yeah. actually publishing most of the Euro games, and, and and they're just republishing the games for the local market, right? Uh, yeah. I don't think there's much value add there, so they're just printing it. Selling it to the local market. Yeah. Uh, most of the game designers, most of the local games that you see, are self published. Right. They, they channel it on their own and they do a self publish. Right? So, so, in a way, yes, maybe there is a need for. But it's a chicken and egg case, right? For instance, you may want to turn it around and, and ask the question the other way. Why would a publisher publish a game? That's a number one question. It won't be because they like you, right? Because the game sells. So which means that are you designing a game to sell or are you designing the game to fulfill your own life goal? That, that is, it, it, it's a, it's a, it is a serious question, right? Now you can design a game for your own purpose, sell publish it, sell market it. Now I think some of them do have successes, right? Now we have um, cut um, these are all not, they, they are not printed in small quantities so yeah. So Kapilima, you can google all these games, uh. these are all local games, Politico, 
I think there's a whole list of uh, retakes, re right? There's a whole list of things. So, but they are not. Now, do you call the company that published this game a publisher? I don't know. What draws the line? Because they are not exactly publishing other games, right? They are only doing that game. Because they are probably invested in it, they are their own internal stakeholders and so on, right? So, so but there is no, um, I would say, there's no proper publishers that are like, like what you have in the US, like Asmodi, Simon, whoever, right? You can pitch to these people. Nothing stops you from doing that, right? right? And in fact, if you pitch and they accept, accept your games, you are there already, right? Now, the closest to a proper board game publisher, one who does publish original games and not a reprint of some other title, is Singapore's Origami. In fact, they're going to be here next week. Ori game. Uh, Ori, uh, uh, Ori game. Yeah. I think Daryl's already here. Oh, okay. uh, they're going to be here. Dar he's, he's only here to later, ma. Is it? Okay. Yeah. So. Right. Yes. Uh, they're interested in carrying games. They, Let's see they, how. I, well, I suppose if your game has a strong pool, I don't think he will say no. Uh, actually, they, they did mention that they have a list of games of their own that they are uh, in the schedule to yes. uh, print. So they, currently, they have no intention to see other people games. Oh, okay, if that's where, but they close the doors, huh? But they are, uh, 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 I think, probably the type of publisher they're looking for, who are looking at um, any game design, looking at them, and, and going to print up of people. And not just publishing their own games. So, so, but they're based in Singapore. Now, Daryl is here next week, so we want to have a chat, chat with him and so on. I think look for some, I think he's going to some Pokemon Cafe, I think he's going to Viva Pokemon Cafe at uh, Santos and so on. So talk to him and say hi, and he did ask us, but I uh, wouldn't have time to do that for him, so, so we wouldn't be done here. Yeah. So uh, say hi to Mike and Yvonne. So a quick intro for the, some of the new people. Oh, oh, uh, so sorry. Mike, Mike publishes his own games. Uh, Empire publishing, but again, it's his own. You don't accept outside design, right? So it's mainly his own games, right? So because they are talking about game publishers, right? So we're talking about those who are in the market and so on. I think Origami is probably the only one that will take on people's game and consider, but uh, he said it's closed, yeah? Okay. Uh, oh, I, quick, I, 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 quick I, I, intro for the benefit of the other people first, yeah? Hello, sir. How do you game? Game I so just here to see where this is going yeah. so, so the most of them, as I mentioned, are at the moment self-publishing. Yeah? And of course there's Papa. <laughs> okay, let's do a quick walk to see whether we're going to continue the session. Yeah, just for the benefit of those who are late, this means we continue the topic, this means we kill the topic. One, two, three, go. Okay, most of them, I think there's a more down than up. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, down. So we are down with this topic. So now we talk about how to promote board game hobby through school and college students. That's one part about abnormal gamer. We'll come to that later. Okay, let's start. I think the question is that how do we promote board games through school and college students? Or why do you want to do that? Okay, actually, uh, indirectly, when this hobby is growing in the uh, student league, there's more chances uh, for local team to introduce them, right? I mean, it's uh, grow together. Lah. So, but you know, uh, I do see that uh, the current, uh, I'm not sure, uh, the other time I'm ask all, but is it possible that? Uh, the meaning uh, our most of the club for that, right? right? So I mean, if you want to encourage it, it's easy to get a lot of school because they don't know what to buy. So having a small selection list of like, you know, like popular games that they can buy, or like 1,000 games, they can buy X amount of games, and then the difficult part is going to each school to sell the idea of it, you know, getting them to buy it. Sure, now they're going to buy SPM games, but to encourage them. Compile a short list of suggestions and then do outreach to them. 
I read they don't know what buy really make. And the cost can be quite scary la, for them to be looking and compare with what what I mean, what's like in that cost. Yeah. Yeah, true. I think there are layers to your question, right? Yeah. Are you looking at, for instance, finding out how to get schools to get into board gaming? Just talk about Ivan was answering, or getting schools to um, market your games. There's two uh, different things. Huh? Actually, yeah, I understand. But uh, when they uh, now at the at the present state, I think even they uh, I talk maybe college size is better, but uh, I talk about secondary school. Uh, I think uh, is there are not so much uh, uh, the percentage uh, involved in the board game hobby. So. Uh, first, of course, we have to trigger you know, the, this hobby to grow in the school first. Second step only we can you know, the same time promote the hobby game. Uh. At, the, at the beginning time, maybe you have to be start with this uh, uh, internet, uh, the, uh, global game, uh, mixed together with local game. But slowly, when this hobby is growing, then we may have more chances you know, to introduce uh, our local game. Um, yeah, okay. uh, so so my experience, uh, I did have uh, one, I did, uh, Hit Distress once consulted me on, on buying games for a school. Uh. So the issue is that uh, you need to have a local champion. Uh, and this is a secondary school level. If you don't have a local champion, if you don't have a teacher on board that is being trained to play this game, you'll just put it into the library and then you'll just run. Uh, and there's also issues on uh, shrinkage as well. So if your game right has one combo, has a lot of components and all of them are in, uh, uh, important, you lose one, you cannot play the game with the other, then the game might as well throw away already. So uh, they told me that what's that game? Uh, uh, Lepa game was pretty decent because if you lose one card, you can still continue playing. But if let's say it's unfortunately like a, a chat, a kind of like chess game, like maybe like Hua Xiang's game, like you lose one, like you cannot play the other, then you are very bad again. But I really think uh, if you want to go into schools, you need to do at least two things. Uh, and this is secondary school level. Uh. Number one, you need to be programmatic. You need to continually provide support and, co and make the link between games and education. If it's, if, because right now, I think there's some thinking like games is just for, uh, for children to relax only. So if, if they stay in that way, right, they're not going to support you. Because the, the number one thinking right now is how do I get kids to pass the exams? So if you, if, if, you, if your staff does not support that, right, then uh, they're not going to support you. Number two is, uh, uh, so you need to have that program. Uh, and number two is the, uh, what you, how are you going to train the teachers and stuff like that to actually bring the games and make sure the kids are, uh, are on the uprise in terms of the academic performance. So uh, in, that's for secondary school. I think uh, if you move to tertiary institutions, like it comes and goes depending on uh, secondary school interests. And with, this might not. This might also be, you know, stretch into the more like Euro, uh, the games that we kind of play here. Uh, um, for them, it, it, it really it depends on whether there are students who are interested or not. I think uh, the institution I'm working with, Sunway, uh, we had a board games club, but the board game club died after one of the main members who owned all the board games graduated. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, uh, so unfortunately, he didn't. He did, couldn't buy him, buy him one. He couldn't pull a junior into investing into games as well. So when he left and he didn't want to continue to support the club with his games, then Maki um, But uh, I do I do observe a trend that like, a lot of board game cafes do open up near private school, private colleges uh, for plus minus like Mark, like some way that's uh, get on board. Uh, the access to area is obviously people's. Uh, if you go here, so you see SI that is uh, upper, 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 upper class, right? Upper, and then upper, upper, yeah. last time in Rita is also Takaro. Um, so that so they are helping in a way, uh, but probably I don't know. It's a bit difficult to, to figure out because for them it's you need to pay to play, right? But then the the clubs are um, they have a different. It's it's, it's ideally cheaper, lah. So there's a there's a natural competition between that. So I don't know how to figure that out. Okay, that's all I have to say. Uh, so, quick word, continue or kill the topic. Okay, one, two, three. One, two, three, four, down. Okay, we are going to kill it. How do you know your game is ready? 
you, you all are playtesting games, right? You, I mean, okay, you haven't done your new, you haven't done your playtest, but assuming that you have a game and you playtest, right? So how do you know your game is ready? Based on, um, Feel. Uh, based on experience, uh, after a few rounds of data testing, when everything's really prepared, printed, ready, right? Then we plan the marketing, how we're going to roll it out, all our tutorial videos and stuff like that. Then we just have to go roll it. There's no, there's no best time. Right? Um, ideally, you should start plan your release around time when people are buying more stuff. Right? Like Christmas or so, such, then maybe you can have a higher chance of selling it more. Like, yeah, but there's there was no real like moment that you oh, it's perfect time to go. On. So if you got the money, you can print everything. Right? I'm supposed to do it. I would say this go. Yeah. So for those who already have games in the pipeline, how do you know when you cut off? You haven't think that far yet. <laughs> I think the it came with the end in mind, man. I think that the most important is because uh, like like just early mentioned, you gotta test on those small gamer if you really want to know how especially uh just put one example like uh, how good your room writing, you know, some 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 uh, item is uh you you have to have some people to assess you know whether is is it uh, uh, or the gameplay is it uh uh, fun enough, well, that, that one uh, is hard to judge by a small play, play test uh, group. Uh, there could be a uh, to those uh, person, maybe you don't know one, or the low, don't play game on, the, especially those uh, gateway game and the family game, uh, really, uh, to see whether if, uh, whether the game is very interesting or not. <laughs> that, that I think is, is uh, to judge whether it's ready or not. But make the game is it, good mechanic, good is. You feel that it is uh, working with good that uh, mean no uh, no broken is it's nice, but is it not fun to play possible, right? So I think I uh, have to be moved to second level whether your game is fun to play or not. If it's not fun to play, then I have to say it's a lady. But what Chikong has described is what you call a blind test. That's probably the, the last test actually. That's almost the last test. Hi, welcome. Right. How many of you who design games or who have published games do a blind test? Blind test. Yeah. My good blind blind test. You basically give the whole game to someone, you don't even teach him rules and so on, and you let him figure out to, I mean, I will be talking about simple games, uh, simple. You don't give him hex palmier, uh, then he will he will, he will take it one whole week to get back to you, uh, So so simple games that you you can just drive drive through uh, so you find out any more. But those uh, that doesn't test the readiness of the game in, in a way because your game at stage is more or less ready. You just you have one more test before you roll it up. Good, good input. Anyone else? What do you all think? New people? Fresh ideas. These ideas are all stuck in one chain. <laughs> so new people have a different angle to that. You come behind me, you can't be it's, it's ready when you don't want to work in it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's, if there's no more loopholes in the game, then it's considered. It always has loopholes. <laughs> 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 you play this at the time, you, you feel like there's nothing else to. Uh, repair then, you know, for me. Because when you design a game, you already decide the team and whether farmer, you, you can get on the server from the playtester already. Yeah. Recently, I moved on from my game to publishing side because I brought up the game a few times. I couldn't find rules that are broken. So it's very balanced, but uh, then I played with non gamers because my game is fairly small, more like a gateway game. They enjoyed it, then I, like, I have nothing to fix this game. People seem to be enjoying it, then I just move on to, I move on to register, then I'm trying to publish it now. Does any of you do the Lean Startup test? Meaning, when your game is almost ready, in semi prototype state, you test it out with non gamers, non friends, right? Uh, non friends, non boyfriends, girlfriends, relatives, or whatever, right? Random people. At the end of a test, you offer him, I offer you this prototype for 10 ringgit, pay me now. When I publish a game, you get one full game. Do you do that? 
I would say that if you talk to 10 people, you get a certain number who pay you 10 ringgit, it's a goal. Okay, okay, they're 10 not, ringgit, uh. Or whatever, I, I'm just well, putting numbers out. Uh, no, it's important because like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like, <laughs> like some of us are pretty heavy games, right? Yes, yes. So, so the, the game depends on your, you know, even the offer depends on you. It doesn't have to be a video or actual game, right? Yeah. So I'm just putting you an example. But, but the key is that you can test, you can ask anyone, how do you find the game? Uh? In Malaysia, you get a polite re reply. But the game is good. Uh. Or you get a not so polite reply and then you end up defending. Uh. The only test you ask me is, are they willing to pay for a game? Because now, unless you are designing and printing the game for your own self, your life goal, I copy the game already, it doesn't matter how many I sell, okay? That's fine. But if you want to sell, you want these people to publish, the number one question is, how many can you sell? Right? And that question can only be answered by, are you willing to pay me money for my game? If you're not willing to pay me, something is wrong, something I don't know what is wrong yet, but there is a gap, right? I have not told a gap. Word of trial. Okay, uh, we have reached the time. Roman word again. Up now. One, two, three. Okay, we have done uh, one or two topic. Okay, we can continue next week. <laughs> and now the million dollar question. <laughs> Best marketing strategy for board games in Malaysia. <laughs> you want to clarify or you want to start that? I think, like previous topic, uh, this is also related, uh, very closely related to Malaysia, kind of educational background, culture. Because again, like this is a habit that should be built up to be really secondary school or even younger. But again, the Malaysia whole educational system is so test oriented where your most of the parents or even school they just want their students to score well. So they don't have the extra time to spend and to tell you like, oh you know learning board games can help you to train your uh, logical skill or whatever that they could apply in their exam, which basically you know because they just want you to go and memorize and score well. So again I think that's also related to a lot of factors. So I'm just thinking like, okay, we have one volume maybe, then we want to market. Then again, are we just limited to college students or just purely gamers? Like we already have an interest in the board game. That's why there's a very small market group only. So how to like open up this whole world? Okay, so hold on, I mean, switch my side. So okay, so this one I've been thinking a lot about it as well. Huh? Number one, I think number one, the gamer mark, the gamer market, right, is a non-starter for, Mal for Malaysian designers simply because these people already know the access to action spiel and and game and games con and stuff like that. All the international games that like you are competing for their time with with all these other games around the world. All three thousand, all three to six thousand games that are being published around the world. If you, I mean, you, you have to be super, super powerful to do that. So the real market in Malaysia, right, is the non-gamers. So which means that you need to design light and you need to design thematically. I think the best selling game that is a non-mass market game, which is not, basically not Jutaria, not Saidina, right, uh, that is on our level, right, is um, the Malaysian Dream, which is not Singapore, which is actually not Malaysian. Uh, it's Singaporean design and Singapore Dream, and then it was like brought over to the local subsidiary. Uh, and to say the best marketing strategy is to have a marketing company in the first place, which is basically what MGAC is. It has already like several like hundred thousand, several hundred thousand followers. They just put up, put, post up on their market, on their content channel, channel uh, and then they sell. I know for a fact they printed at least fifty thousand copies. Maybe a second, second printing of, of another similar, um, similar quantity. So, uh, I the probably the only pers only other game on our level that uh, has similar similar levels of um, well, you got, can move similar quantities is Politico. Uh, probably that one. I would estimate lah. Uh, Mangkau can if Mangkau sees, he can tell me properly. But I think they have at least three publishing runs, which means if each time got one thousand, got like maybe three, maybe you'll be looking probably at six to six, three to six thousand units. So, but the rest of the um, 
rest of the Legion games, like all is like 1,000, 1,000 something only per, uh, per game. I think, I think Haki Lima haven't, haven't finished that. Haki Lima? Oh, I thought it went for the second place. Went for second Oh, I think so, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they went for the second place. They printed the first game. Uh, I think uh, Restix also reprinted again. Uh, they, up, they update every now and then. Um, so I need to do three editions. Say it? No, 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 three editions. Okay. So yes, uh, with that being said, uh, uh, a lot of self self publishing. Uh, so that is the best marketing strategy I've seen so far. If you want to say, uh, what is that? The most appropriate marketing strategy if you are, uh, what do you call that? If you are self publishing, is whatever you can put into it. Uh, because like, uh, I think a lot. Of, if you are self publishing, a lot of times it is like you you are just going and selling by yourself. You put into uh, games. Uh, you put into a cafe or some sort of like uh, what do you call that uh, retail outlet. Uh, but because there's no marketing, it is really nobody really knows about the game. So having a strategy at all is great in the first place. I just I just want to add. So these are actually wanted to answer it previously also, right? Um, so one is that a few years ago, uh, KDU has a and they still do have a game development team, a uh, game development course, right? So a couple of years ago, <laughs> you're on camera. Sorry. No, he, I behind uh, you. Uh, oh, he's part. He's part. Of, he was part. Of it. So I mean, a couple of years ago, they had a Petacon, which is a convention for their students to play test the games, right? Um, I think that was pretty successful in the sense that I, I remember seeing one person selling. A love letter to skin. It's just exactly love letter, but he repeated all the cards to fit with and he was selling very, very well. Right? I think because the main reason is because you're he, offering play dice, people like love letters or gameplay. It's very simple, there's a lot of take that, things like that. Um, so that's one way, because uh, like what Eugen said, a lot of college students tend to be into board gaming anyway, if you can kind of chat in with the, 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 like this sort of conventions targeted at students then that will work, right? If you go to Comic Fiesta, not Comic Fiesta, but um, a couple of any conventions, I've seen people pitching board games there as well. I've got quite a like, of Darium Academy. Oh yeah, there's Jared. Jared was, uh, yeah. a long, was a founding member, but he's here yeah. and there now. Yeah, so conventions is one way. So I've also been to conventions about sustainable cities where they were selling this game called Rimba. Rimba, yeah, that's right. right. So that's Nisha, yes. Conventions are, I guess, a very good way of reaching out to non gamer audiences who so normally not otherwise not see a board game. And it's also very targeted. So if you go to a sustainable development conference, then you know everybody that is interested in the topic that you want to talk about. Then you have to sell similar kind of games. Yeah. Right? Don't sell an anime game and a sustainable yeah. game. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you put any factors on it, then maybe they will. Okay, okay. <laughs> Okay, quick word. Continue. Continue. No, 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 in between, ah. No, in between, ah. Continue, ah. Continue, ah. Continue, ah. You go and say something. Those who continue, ah, say, they have something to say? Oh, you have something to say? Yeah, yeah. Like, 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 with the one last time, organized, uh, like, TCM wise, so. That one can be continued. You know, that's what basically Alpha means in the version is not right? Small scale up. Yeah. 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 The intention of the one was just to showcase all the different kinds of uh, games available besides the usual fare that we have. Like, right? So we have the retailers and we have the uh, I think the time we go into SPN to showcase the uh the game Bola or yeah. Bola 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 so that's one thing that can, as a community, we can do again. Uh, you know, if there's interest in uh, play testing, actually, every university has about, for game development, there's about 20 over programs running in Malaysia. Uh, so most of them have a board game uh, subject of some sort. So those are people that you can get in depth to do together interest. Bring your play testing prototypes. There's a lot of with prototypes flying around. With that being said, I also feel that like student games, they tend to be like, oh, I just, I'm just doing it on assignment and then once, once it's done, I'm just going to chuck it aside. For mixture, for mixture, yeah. I, I'm on the panel for AP, so I assess their board game. So some of, of course, the majority of them are just an assignment-based kind of thing, they don't get rid of it. 
but there are one or two sometimes that that egg looks to have potential signs can be can be worked on further and then can yeah, actually yeah. be published eventually or with some effort. Yeah, so these are some of the initiatives that actually we can uh, pull together. Yeah, if, if the community wants to do so, but it will, it will, it will require everyone's every different participant, you know, like uh, we from retailers all the way to uh, designers all the way to consumers, even even cosplayers and stuff that for it to be an event. One way you all can think around this issue is that as typical gamers, we tend to play When you talk to Marvin, when you talk to a marketing person, the only thing he will tell you is not what your products do, but who are you selling it to. Now, if you go back to some of the games that Indian mentioned, real sticks, they actually have a capture crowd, kind of. Right, political, even drama for good to do. The team are very strong. They appeal to a certain group of people, right, and they blast it to those group of people. So, are you designing your game just for the mechanic or for the team alone, or are you designing for a specific buyer in mind? If you have the buyer in mind, you know whatever persona that you have, you can then target. If you don't have, you just have a game that you think is the best auction game or whatever game you want to call it, right? You are using a shotgun and blast every, everyone. Right? You're just basically hitting a, a lot of random people and not getting what you want. So so that, you know, that maybe that reverse it back and says that who will buy my game and why would he buy this game? Uh, can I say something about... Actually two things. Uh, uh, let me the camera again. Uh, so I was... The first thing is, I want to say is, uh, your marketing campaign and strategy, uh, don't take it as final, but uh, you can have like a bit of a random, a, a bit of walk in the garden kind of uh, strategy that, in the sense that you don't actually have, if you have a particular idea, you don't actually have to stick to it. So, but, uh, when I was speaking to, not, not I, but like, uh, I got introduced to some of the Singaporean game designers. So, I, as, as anybody know a lot of the courts, so a lot of the courts also had a kind of like AD marketing that, uh, testing strategy for the uh, marketing as well. So they tried to put up videos, and whichever, uh, but some, the first video, the first three videos that they put up were not successful, but uh, some, eventually they, they found like, okay, this video is doing better. Then, so they started using that video as their marketing, um, market, main marketing tool, and that led to better uh, crowdfunding success. And I uh, just want to say also, if you're thinking about crowdfunding your game as well, that is another marketing nightmare. Okay, yes. Nightmare or opportunity? Oh, hold on. Someone, uh, Elwin wants to say, in extension to Jeff's point, designers not only need to think about their persona of the buyer, but their game as a product as well. Thanks, Elwin. Wait, wait, wait one more, I don't mind. Yeah, sure. For everyone to come have a game, right? Your, your tutorial is actually a nothing to do. <laughs> so, mini yeah. picture. Uh, like for, for, for my card game, besides the instruction manual, uh, I assume that some people know it like myself. So I made a video, animated video of how it works. And then I assume some people don't like that one. So I need one that they actually play. So there are three different methods of like, like three different ways of learning. So we put them to GP. I use the video to spray out in order for people to check out the game before they buy it. To wrap on to that, uh, Drama Guru Tudor actually did the video in fact at Morgan Cafe, I think it was three years back before the launch, yeah, and uh, it was cut. Uh, it's like how to get their skill, they were, they were playing, the next one we got how to play that. Uh, so then they lost the class of the dog and the video. Yeah. Alright, uh, time is up. Vote to continue or. Alright, I think we are done with this topic. How long is the optimal time for a game period for the non gamer market? Five minutes per round. <laughs> Five minutes per game. Hanami. <laughs> or Love Letter. Uh, I asked this question because, of course, uh, the easier way to come up for first game is those, uh, I would give, give others a simple game. 
So, passive work in, uh, in the gamer community and in the non gamer community is different definition. How long is that? So, uh, for, for us, uh, we play normal already in the hobby one. 30 minutes is nothing. 30 minutes is one game, nothing. But for non, non gamer those are more people, he may like play poker game maybe 10 minutes. More than 20 minutes is a long game already. Right? So, I'm not sure how. Uh, not sure how. So, maybe we need to do a survey at least. Among uh, uh, some normal people, uh, the over uh, already half hour is it a long game for them? Anyone got experience? Uh, I got some experience. Uh, I got problems some games to my colleague. Uh, they all are non non game. Okay. Uh, learning, just learning. Uh, just learning. Yeah, uh, all are non non game. Uh, just I uh, just promote what is sport game. What is sport game? Because in Yamaha, your board game are like, uh, like what are, like chess or uh, two player game are uh, like snake uh, the snake chess uh, like that. Uh. In Yamaha, still still like that uh. So they are promote some game uh, like really like game uh, really like. Uh, I think take thirty minutes okay, twenty to thirty minutes okay. Uh, they they uh, I got promote what game uh, uh Citadel? uh point seller. Ah, point seller. Uh, they they play is they say oh fun. They say play fun ah. Uh. Point seller. Uh, skater. Point seller. Uh, I also forgot. Uh, got some sound like game. Uh. They say oh, okay ah. Uh. This is sport game ah. Uh. I say yes. Now I mean now the pocket is very advanced ah. Uh, not uh, as they as they know ah. Uh. So then I got after that uh, I got I got uh introduce some medium game ah. Uh. They also. They play also okay. So if you say, uh, I, I don't know because uh, I try few few group uh, that non non gamers lah. Uh, I use twenty minute or thirty minute. Uh, that's it. For me lah, I go promote some game lah. is longer than 30 minutes? How many of you? How many of you are focusing on below 30 minutes? I got, uh, I got more than few hours. <laughs> below, below 30 minutes, I also have uh, the games. So if the non camera, I also uh, just uh, introduce them the light camera. For them, no white spot camera. That's it. I think 15 is 15 to 20. Like, around there, the nice people uh, or non. I mean, include, in, 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 including we, uh, including we introduce the game the and the law uh, and the rules how to, how, how to play, uh, including uh, 30 minutes to 20 minutes is enough for a day. The rules is teach is actually the most important. Yes, yes, yes. yes. The most important. Is your non -gamer, yeah? Anything that takes more than five minutes to teach, you have to justify it. Yes, 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 yes. The play time is actually less important. Because if they like the game, like we know people who play King of Tokyo six times in a row, yeah? And I'm not talking about the same game, they finish it, let's do it again, you know, six times in a row. So they don't feel that it is long, right? Mm -hmm. Correct? But, but because King of Tokyo is you know, quite easy to get into, right? So the teach is important because if you are targeting, non-gamer and by non-gamer I presume people who either don't ever play board games before or who doesn't care about board games, right? He has a kind of ego when people don't care about board games, but there are more of those people around than us, yeah. So to these people, if you need more than three minutes to teach them a game, they will switch off, yeah. So 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 once you can get in in under five minutes time, the gameplay can be of course you don't track it in two hours, huh? but but it's less than forty minutes, thirty minutes, forty five minutes, I think No? Uh, can, uh, if I just add one more thing, uh, the most popular game in the world is Monopoly, and that's one, one and one half hours. So your marketing can kind of overcome the, yes, yes. the fear. Okay. But because Monopoly does, uh, you almost don't have to teach anything most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> you just open everybody knows how to play Monopoly. 
I guess that's, a, that's the strength of roll and move, right? Like, you can teach as you go along. Uh, although the, you're probably your first game, you're going to screw up really bad. Huh? But the best is that if your game is short, you screw up, you can play again, right? Corruption cost. Who asked one? Okay. What about Yeah. Uh, I think start off with that and then 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so it's also again like your costing is high, then of course your selling price will be high, and then Malaysian market whether or not people willing to pay. That's yeah. also question. So maybe you create a good game, but again the cost is so high, then you sell at high cost, then they will say, no, I'm not gonna pay for it. Actually, it's not higher compared to ourselves. So, even come to Indonesia, the same thing cut off even the gun. Because the demand is not that high. So, the import the data is different from ourselves. So, we cannot compete that much. So, this is the problem we have to do. Let's do a vote. One, two, three. Go one more round. Continue. Sourcing the components is one of the things. Sourcing the components. Because I've been talking to printers and they can't do cheap pop, most of them. Because you need a machine to cut. Then most of them refer me back to China. So, and of course, when you ask for a printer company to print your board game, it's something very unusual for them. Because they used to print uh, business cards, flyers, and stuff. So, then it's also, you need to get the printers to. Uh, used to printing more than But they are, they are printing, starting to printing, I mean printing company, yeah, they are so called like, oh, that this is the yeah. So they have to bring printing those technology. Yeah. Yeah, but the cost will be slightly higher. Yeah, of course I've been talking to this printer company, they I proposed them to print cheap boards, make tokens. Mm -hmm. They actually tried and they say I cannot do this for you because the cost is too high. <laughs> yeah, and the thing looks actually quite nice. They should. So they can do it like this, not cost effective. Yeah, yeah, because the machinery is from a brand, so they just oh, blend oh, it and then did it, and then they show me, and then the, it, it looks nice, it's pretty clean cut, but it, he, uh, she told me it's too expensive to do this for a long time. Do you know what's the minimum quantity to print from China? Fine. Depends on the company. Depends on the company. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah, so the bigger companies like Panda now, right, they don't take low, you know. Uh, the, the minimum order is quite high, already, right? But you but, have 500 people too, right? Uh, five, that is low for Panda already. Yes, no, of course. There are tiers of manufacturing in yeah. China, right? In the past, they don't do anything below 2,000 copies. But recently, uh, this competition or whatever, they are, uh, they are moving to. Yes, of course, we have a different tier. You know, Panda or anything is a low tier, but long. Long time or anything, right? They are not going to deal with small print. And they are smaller ones that will deal with small print. Your issue is logistic, actually. Yeah, 500 copy you can do. But ship number will be over here. It might cost you more than more than the printer. Yes. So the issue is logistic. Yeah. Also, there's issues with self packing as well. So I think Kaki Lima self pack their own stuff because they. Um, they, they source different components from different companies. They don't rely on the printer to do it for them. So you, you can save some money because uh, they don't charge you the service fee. Um, although then the question is, uh, if you're getting like non-standard material that means you're not, uh, you know, it's not like the, the factory is buying them on, on, on bulk, right? Um, and then you have to find your own labor to go and pack. So the good thing is that if you pack, then you get to control your own uh, quality. How, how, how you want it presented, you ensure you got an X number of tokens and stuff like that. But then you need your own labor. Lah. And then uh, I think uh, you also need space of your own as well. And I think, what's her name? Um, Yen kind of died a little bit uh, doing that. I think with Clatopoli also, we, we lucky that time we, had a, we just had a batch of interns come in. And we can guess we basically, oh. <laughs> we basically just make them like count on on two three four five six seven and then we got ten. I've been talking to a few China manufacturers. So far, they told me five hundred. Five hundred quantity. Uh, yeah. And uh, shipping depends on the size of the. So it be nice to be uh, in terms, yeah. Uh? If you have interns in those <laughs> place. Uh, so uh, the five hundred quantity they quoted me around two hundred USD. Uh, for what? Okay. Yeah. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. Maybe because my game is small and not that heavy. So if it's heavier, like I tried to order twenty thousand metal points. That costs a lot. I think thousand over USD. Cost probably because of it. So it's 
So it depends on the way that uh, you are like, buying from China. I agree with like one, two or three cartons like that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, the problem is the local guy asked me to go to cost the, 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 the components. Yeah. Yeah. They could only print the box. Uh, I think the car, they're getting better and better already. I think the only one thing is community, if they share the what printer they use, right? Then everyone invests in those guys, right? Yeah. And they can actually become specialists. I think I spend money on this printer. We do have a list, right? Okay, so this is a semi political issue in DPGD and Y itself because there are so few printers and there are, there are people who, are, who come into the community and then post. But every now and then, like every once in every three months, they will come and post into the group and go, like, Oh, does anybody know any printers? And then, okay, people say, say all this stuff and then we never hear from these people again. So now look, some, of the, some of the designers are very swan already, don't want to. Don't, don't really want to buy this kind of questions. But uh, there is supposedly uh, what is that? A document in DTGDMY that does list these kind of things. It's an open document. Any by right any, any member in DTGDMY can edit it. Uh, but it's just not very updated uh, actively lah. So that's the state of that at the moment. Time's up. Another session? Yes, no? Okay, we're going to kill that. How important is a team on gameplay? Oh, team. Team. Yes, yes. Uh, I mean, is it, is uh, really aspect, especially in the simple game, is it this team uh, really aspect to the, you know, uh, whether, uh, how, how oh, well from uh, this, I mean, uh, whether people can accept the good easily or not. How, how, how much impact on uh, marketing also? On this, on the team. Now, example, uh, you say, I think there's a Ducky Lever is linked to the two list. Uh, this uh, big tech is linked to nature protection, nature development protection, also now new game from Peggy from Zulu also, is on the nature protection. So, uh, I don't know whether uh, is it a, a good direction uh, to take a good team to apply on the board game, uh, besides mechanic, or uh, if, you, if you have a good team, it will be more easier to push the game. So, to introduce to the market. Uh, that's my question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think it's very, very important. Your question is that they're not playing the other team. The fact where you sell it to how you approach your target market. Like um, my, my car team for office work, uh, and I feel that team, I love fantasy, I love sci-fi, but part of me felt that if I made a sense of sense to a sci-fi game, uh, my, my company would be much better. So I went for office politics, with my assumption is everyone works like, and everyone hits their office uh, to some extent. In front, everyone hits office work. Uh, so that's why my, my choice of team was very different. Uh, so, uh, my name is Scott Hijar. So, when I took that team, when I came to marketing, I came to all the HR groups and keep spending their Facebook page. Right? Uh, I went around posting here and there, I tried to uh, hit HR trainers and stuff like that as well. So, not only just the gamers, the board games, the board games to go and all that, but also to the HR groups and the like corporate entrepreneurship groups and stuff like that. So, anyone related to the business and work, I, I wanted my team to be able to reach out to those. And yeah. Team also is like when you want to buy, you, kind of, you see some on the shelf, right? You, like, if I see fantasy and sci-fi, I don't want to buy that, but I realize that locally, I don't know how strong is that. that you yeah. It's strong, but it's not as big a market as the big market. Yeah. <coughs> so, so it's just a matter of what, what you want to get there, right? Yeah, when you hit a bigger pool, then you can do. That would be a better team. You know, if you look at all the games that you get and all these people mentioned as kind of successful local games, you can almost feel that they drink with teams, right? Kakinima, Politico, uh, Drama Ubuntu, right? Relation Dream, all, all these that have certain teams, right? Even though, yes, the mechanics and the gameplay is what I'm talking to you, you know, for, for people to buy or whatever, it's a team that makes you stay here. Yeah, it's, it's, for me, I feel it's very cliche, you know. 
Like every every other game that comes out is feels like a full team game. Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, the way I think about this is that like um, I think the most important yeah I think the most important bit about team is actually marketing. Like uh, the way that you buy a game, it's literally uh, it's literally on team. Uh, whether or not people will continue playing is another thing or not. Uh, that one is game play. Uh, I think once you get that past that stage, it's very fuzzy. Like you can have like I feel like uh, what's that? What's that one idea? The 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 type the the, the uh, Azul. Azul. Azul has like you read the you read the opening paragraph already, then it has nothing to do with the opening paragraph already. But uh, uh, so I think uh, as long as you don't commit uh, what is that uh, uh, that that term uh, your team your gameplay does not violate the team. Like you cannot have a team, a team of like peace and then it, your game is about war. Uh, like a paid and switch sort of situation. Yeah, you don't want to, that sort of <laughs> that sort of thing. That one will make your players like, angry. Um, I think it's uh, how hello. Me and me. Do 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 do. Hey, event next week, yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's see, let's see. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, I think. Let's see, where was I already? Uh, yeah, I think uh, within the game itself, we can play along as long as it doesn't clash too much with your team. Even that, uh, the game is a bit on pace on, uh, but it's not, uh, you know, very, uh, very big content, you know, like uh, those, uh, it's take a very big content, okay? but the team is very simple, but just good for marketing, you can just pace on it, and still can, you know. <laughs> And pack it, pack it as a. That's why they have the euro and the Mary. With that being said, this, this, this is something for Clarissa, okay? Clarissa, you, know, so you, you all know you have been playing Clarissa's game. Uh, don't put the card, you have to put a pause. I know the thematic, if you if you design from a thematic standpoint, right, you've got all these ideas that you want to put in, but putting in too much stuff that is thematic will ruin your game sometimes. So. <laughs> Let's vote. One, two, three. You are done. Finding partners and starting a business. The easiest kind of thing? Yes. Um, so, if I can start on this, um, the, my issue is that, like, uh, when I was, I, I met Daryl in Singapore a month or two ago. Uh, what's his name of his uh, colleague already? But I see that Daryl and his colleague. Work very well together. Um, they were assessing games that, that they wanted to, like Vietnamese games that they wanted to carry. So we played the games in the in the meetup, and they were like talking about it. Can can this be? Uh, can we carry this? Do you think this is a good game to carry to the market? Uh, so they were very business oriented, but at the same time, uh, they played on each other's each other's strengths. So to that extent, like um, one thing I have not asked them themselves, which I reflected on. Um, that interaction, but you know, I, I don't know how um, Daryl Kang is co-founder, um, um, and just and I think like if you are thinking of publishing, self-publishing, right, you can't you can't do it so low. Uh, I've heard like advice that you at least need a minimum three, not four person team. So uh, I often think about like. How like if I do want to self publish, like how do how do I get people I can work I can work with? Do you want to go out of our team? We have three people looking for one. <laughs> 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 so you have to join. Okay. Okay, right? You push. Okay, we'll publish it. I think better to do the stuff and then just pay someone to put the pass that you mean. Really, uh, but you have a community, right? Yeah. You do not. I mean, yeah, you, you may be good to have a partner, but you may want to ask why you need a partner in the first place. But you could have, you could also tap into the strength of the community, right? Yeah. And, and honestly, of all the other spaces that we have received, right? 
Malaysia has one of the better organized teams in the group. Right? And in fact, for all say, I'm not sure Singapore has similar. Right? But Singapore has an outstanding game provision for in Oregon. Right? Or, or again, yeah? But that is because Dara brought all the skills back when he was working with Steven Oli back from Canada. Back here, he has gained the heat and then he's probably found a good partner and he kicked them off. Right? That could be the exception rather than not. Because otherwise you don't see many of that activities happening in Singapore compared to the Malaysia here, right? So you could tap into this, yeah? If, if you don't need a partner, what I'm saying is that. But yes, a partner be developed. Right? That's also why we form three of us in order to Finding partners is the hardest thing, I suppose. Right? Yeah, in any business. Yeah, I mean, no, yeah, not just working business, finding partners here is the hardest thing. I, mean, I, I, I know I, 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 I try to watch life just now. Uh, I believe now at the point where how the, the business, I guess, right? if my point afterwards, like this kid, sorry, but just share my, my part. Huh? I never published game like some of it. Because 12 years ago, I want to do this. But at the moment, I think, at the moment, and now it's different. At the moment, I think the market are ready. Who want to buy your yeah, product? Yeah, you learn to do it. Who want to buy? So at that moment, even until now, I've done three games, not public, but it's commission. So they do money. Okay, I know that, that model may work, sometimes may not work. But if you have a right game, some of them pay for it. Maybe for the development design, and maybe even for printing. But they don't want to make it even after. So far, that, that model works well for me. Because I go out and approach people, I should have like, now have six, you know, the part-time things, right? So I just put no that, say that this game, okay, maybe, or you guess, maybe. But I have to keep first. I know sometimes you're in the nothing for you down the road, and someone you win. You better. But you work one halfway, after six years, one, nothing happened, nothing happened. What's the truth, yeah? But I think if you really love doing this, I love. That's right. But same time, you want to get that small win. So someone pay you. At least now, I know, you know. You talk, you should drive and then risk, uh, public yourself, you call it, make money. But I mean, that money. To continue doing, doing. So, three times. Uh, one is a big one. It's a big one. It's a big one. It's a commission, and, and but it's a big one. The other one, I mean, okay, after that, whether they actually publish it internally or whatever, I then really don't care. Uh, but I hope they do. Because if they do, you know, they maybe probably they print even through the CSR, I propose. They can use it from, for the internal uh, recruitment and drive, for example. They can use for CSR. So you have to think, when you do commission, you have to think a bit on corporate or something like that. Because they, they, they will not buy just because it's fun, no. But because they will serve their purpose for their CSR, for their internal training, for their... It can sell. I don't say it's easy, like, but it can sell. But for that, if it serves their purpose, they, they, they buy it right. It's still my main, me, like, still my main. I do have one now, but I'm going to to publish myself separately because I think now the market is possibly ready. 12 years ago, I only know that. <laughs> and maybe lost again, and I don't know anyone else. <laughs> and the social media is not that good, because you do not know, but I think now we get more info. I think it's good. Things have changed up. But I think you may want to consider that commission base. Get whatever your big game that you have now. As I said, maybe they can be taken from the thematic or whatever it is, it's all a guess. There's many all a guess companies that may pay that, and they have a lot of money. Exactly. I mean, as make sure that they, they put your name as a designer, whatever they want to do. But it's tough, lah, commission, because you design a game first, they don't like. When you put a prototype, suddenly from 30 cups, they want 300 cups. Because they become your client. But that is a challenge of commission based on. But they pay you, man. <laughs> no, no, I'm sharing it because I think commission based is something that you may want to. One, one option, I'm not saying the only one, the option that decide the partners, that third party, that the one that's going to pay you, can be the another. So I, I, I'm sharing that 
Printed it, go to market, go to FODS at the time. I don't even sure there is more than five uh, FODS or even two FODS or Pokemon Cafe or this around. No, because they were sold to F1. Right? You take it as a corporate gift, right? So 5,000 is not a lot. Right? They probably may even want more. Right? So the whole rights go to them. You just get a game. And whether the game play that well, fantastic, is also secondary, right? Yes. They wanted a, a thing that has a game. We walk around the team of oil and gas or F1 or whatever, right? And you design it for them, they pay you a fee, your name is still stuck in there. Now, whether you own the IP or not, that's for you to negotiate with him, yes. right? Uh, but, but anyway, anyway. But you do not want, so, so, for example, a share game, yeah. so famous, but everybody complain about it or you want to design yeah, yeah, no, 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 but, but that could be one way you, you approach, but, but again, that is a buyer-based approach, right? Yeah. You identify your buyer and you target that. But, but it, again, it's your right goal, whether is that what you want to do. Some people know, some people want to see their own game, they want to grow it, they want to build it, right? Then that requires a different approach. But let's say, you know, if you do, even if you do go to the commission route or the licensee route, right? Uh, if, I don't know if, if it's easier to convince a big company that you can do it as a person, or if like you can demonstrate that you have a team. Uh, either way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think yeah, I, that's a good point. That's a good yeah, point. that's a good point. But I think that depends on your pitching, right? But but now now what I pitch for at least the last three four years, I have access to hundreds of testers. Yeah. Uh, okay, they will test so. But I, I call this test, all this game, the game is pretty big now. It's very good to get feedback even from this group of people. It's very good for you, and also there's a good point for your buyers. <laughs> for buyers, the fact that you, you, you bring a set of group of testers. Lah. So, so that is a very good point for them, because some of the big ones, those are very, very, very important. Lah. How actually you ensure the quality? No, we don't care, but they will take care. They ask. I know it's easier said than done, but, but it's, uh, it's, it's one way. Right? Of course, I mean, just to get to it, I'm FND. Not only I do that commission, now because I'm a trainer, so I should design I have six, seven games that I designed for my own training. It's a mixture of board game and RPG. So I design it, I, I, the, the component, well, I make it big. It's just a board game, you make it big, the classroom. So, so I do that. So yes, people may not know it, but uh, I just want to share this passion to everyone. It may not be the entire world, but in that particular group, they, they start to share it. And they're just sharing it. That's also another way. Because a lot of trainers now, you can just go and train them. Just be doing some session here. Yeah. Used to. Used to, right? But a lot, a lot of trainers that I know, they're just sharing it. A lot of trainers, they also another bias. But there's many people there only buy from me. Some of the game. They want to find tools. Right? Huh? They, they, buy, they, they want to find tools for to make their, their training session fun. And they pay. Sometimes they call you to bring not the people your own game. They ask you to bring, I don't know, pandemic, uh <laughs> don't know, uh ghost please, you know that's a game. It's not your game. You bring it to them, you I just two hours, you got some money. Just, I'm just, just a way to keep you moving, lah. Just to share, yeah. If, if you want money, 
training games is the way to go. Yeah. Like some of the games, uh, training games I used before, uh, like Go of the Desert King, you may not have heard of it. That game sells for 1,002 US dollar. Right? And I, I'm sure you all know the famous cash flow, right? Mm, you want yeah. to poo-poo the game, right? Yeah. But the game, the original version sells for 600 US dollar and so on, right? It's because they can sell per session. Yeah. The, the person buying it, the trainer, are not looking at the, the 12,002, he's looking at a cost of business. Yeah. If I bring in a 12,002 US dollar game, if I can sell per seat 200 ringgit, I can fill a 20 packs, three sessions, I will cover my money already. So, but, but designing a training game, and, but those games doesn't play that fun now. Huh? So it's two, two yeah, different yeah. purposes. Yeah. 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 Probably even not as fun as Katan, you know? Katan or something. Yeah. But Katan sells or you know? It's not really about the fun, right? Yeah, yeah, correct. It, it is a different market. But it is a lucrative market. That's what I'm trying yeah. to tell you if you go into that market. Yeah? The, the, the simplest, easiest game, training game, which is card based, sell, sells for USD 295. It's just sell you one card like that. And you get the license to run it, wherever it is, and so on. I know I, I'm interrupting because I'm late. My game World of I one game, I think I have posted in BGTG. My World uh, of the World uh, RPG board game for session, one day, one day lah. Uh, it's 8,000, isn't it? 8,000. So, no, he's selling his, his day, training board, session. Okay, board, board. Oh. So, so the training game is a different game. Uh, but it's also a possible route if you want to explore that. Yeah. Alright, uh, let's jump into the last two topics. We have five more minutes to go. Okay. Finish probably one more. How do you promote local board game in Malaysia to, board, to gamer community and abnormal community? <laughs> <laughs> Not gamer community. <laughs> to gamer community and to the normal community. <laughs> I think more interestingly is like uh, how many we group in a, I guess post lockdown, uh, post lockdown, uh, what is that? Post lockdown phase. Meet up vengeance. Hmm? <laughs> we're not post pandemic, but we're post lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to differentiate both gamer and non-gamer? Oh, those are uh, regular train board gamers uh, are considered as a gamer community yeah. uh, then uh, really start buying board gamers uh. those are totally uh, he said he here but he never regularly play or he never buy or never is a uh, normal so to be said, a different set of individuals there when you go to them. Thoughts? I'll say they send the team to the house. Then you go and speak into everything and you find that you wait there for a while and you spend them. <laughs> it's because of uh, why, why I mentioned this. Uh, uh, for the it's okay. The, 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 con, the context is promote local board game. Okay, yes, yeah. Yeah. Not, not those. Why not? Why I mentioned it is, uh, I, think, I believe uh, for the gamer group already, we know the channel, uh, right? No more or less, uh, there's uh, some channel and already uh, uh, doing it and doing it. Then uh, for the non gamer group, I saw is, uh, I saw some kaki gamer uh, in the bookshop, in the, those uh, uh, gallery, you know, the gallery, uh, in some uh, big gallery. And uh, I was sure whether any other channel or possible uh, whether this uh, our whole game can pack as a gift, you know, uh, work together with the gift shop or gift uh, gift company uh, to promote to them uh, to pay as a you know in a hamper, uh, those uh, festival hamper or what, uh, you know, one of the item inside, or uh, whether how to pack it nicely uh, during festival, you know, can. This is this is a very interesting question and I think it's of interest to all of you who want to design local board games, right? Because this is local board games, yeah? Uh, I just want to do a quick vote, yeah? If I call a new arrival meetup next week, it means I'm going to bring all the new arrival and grab it from Europe, Essen and so on and hold a meetup, right? How many of you and your friends is going to come? Hands up? 
So now if I hold a, a meetup next week or next two weeks or whatever, and, and say I will promote local board games, printed and unprinted, yeah. I'm not talking about you, yeah. I'm sure you will come. Right? If you don't come, I'm going to slap you away, right? <laughs> you know, right? How many of your friends who play board games are going to come? So this is a challenge, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if they don't come, now those games are back that I have that I sell has a very different channel. I just need to get the things act the activity set up, people will come, right? Right? But in our case, they may not come. Right? right? Putting aside the why, the da, da, da and so on, right? How do we get them to come? Uh, I suppose that's probably what you want yeah, to ask. Yeah. And, and one more also, uh, like, like just now, uh, mentioned one, whether like the HR game, uh, can, can it make it like a company gift to the employee? Can. Annual, annual dinner. Orientation so, KPI. All yeah, must yeah. play the game once. <laughs> 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 That's a problem. How you came up with that? There's other way of the doing the promotion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, y
Um, but we did have a uh, gamma waves um, in end 2019, and uh, unfortunately, for better or worse, I don't think it was all that much of a success. And I'll talk about this after this. Now there's some IP life. Okay. Oh, that means my whole spiel was kind of not. Okay, never mind. For at least for the people who, who were here. Um, yeah, for me, like, Gamma Waves was a bit of a. Not, it wasn't a success, like, uh, because we couldn't draw the crowds. Uh, we don't. TTGDMY and the Malaysian game designers do not have uh, a natural following just yet. Uh, even individually for published games. Like, um, I mean, ideally, okay, my chum. Hairi, mungkin dia boleh bawa 10 orang. And then, uh, well, Ivan can bring 20 people. Fanny can bring 20 people. And then suddenly we have a community. But that didn't happen. Uh, and, uh, and honestly, as, de as, market as designers, uh, we are really bad at marketing. Maybe like if Gray was more involved, then we have more marketing power as well. But, uh, but you, if you, I think, hello, it's Gray here. But, um, but I think also like the Rex KL, uh, experiment that's going on uh, right now. The Samutan also is like about so-so so so right now. It's okay. I think it's earning a bit of money for uh, for, for Gray. Uh, but in the long run, like it, you know, when we when the TTGDMI form there was co uh, as a result of post Kotakon, right? Uh, all the board managed to bring in I think like 200, 300 people, which is a decent size. Um, we need to get to the numbers, but we, 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 don't, we don't have those numbers just yet. And for us to go to other places, we don't have, the, we don't have a coordinating manpower. Which, in a way, boys back to the original question also. Uh, not being able to pull in uh, people for local board games. Or? Oh, and one more thing also, like, uh, Siu Hong also tries to promote our game, uh, local board games as well. But I know he complained to me that like local designers not exactly very uh, forthcoming with cooperation. Okay. So uh, in terms of like larger trends and marketing as well, it does feel like uh, designers, at least the the published ones lah, uh, not not. Everybody is a walk to than not everybody else. Sorry, very sobering. No, it's yeah, okay. Yeah, I, think, I, think, I, think, I think it's still it's it's a kind of thing. I'm okay. It is what it is, right? So, so what I'm hearing you say is that you have a group of people, but not a team. Yes. Interesting. Pause. You all have things in the game now. But you can get space for free. Then it's coordination work. Lah. Also, it's, 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 it's intelligence level as well. Yeah, you still need a way to get the crowd. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm thinking this since you mentioned a very good point. Very good point. I have been as well for that point. I remember 2015 2016, I was uh, uh, one of the first eight, nine that joined. <laughs> and 2015, uh, I actually, in 2016, I divorced and it was downhill all the way to 2018. But we got back 19, 20,000, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, it is very very quiet because of a group of people that likes not team. <laughs> so so but I, I, I mean if you record it, I mentioned just now the Yasin demonstration. This where I can I, I, I can contribute in terms of I wouldn't connect but I was in good contact with them. Okay. And they themselves can give mental. Like I said just now. Three uh, expo that they went, they just give me a space. They say, how many? They say, do you know any more gamers? At that time, 10 to 13. I don't know anyone else. <laughs> so, so I just, um, I don't know. So they gave me the table, two tables. 
they get there, they are very supportive. So we just have to go there. Yes, if they get the space for six games, first come first lah, come. And another one is end of the year. This uh, what was that? Uh, Expo in mind. Uh, I've been there three years already. I got for free, and I demand this year they give me they give a bigger space. They give for free. Uh, a bigger space for Malaysian game, and I say that can we organize a board game competition, Malaysian game board game? Considering said that it will be in November, November or December. This is two that when I see this two that I can recommend for two. I know next week there is a meeting there. I thought I want to raise that point next week. Uh, uh, that's uh, two things that I can contribute with that uh, because these two events. These two organizations, the crowd is a lot of. Yes, I know it's a random crowd, but it's three. Take it. And if they get to six table, uh, just in case of first come first serve, I don't know who commit that, that six game, or maybe can squeeze seven or eight, I don't know. How we choose that, that that's another choice. Huh? I mean, but what is November is, uh, I forgot the name, it's STEM on, on science, technology, engineering, maths event in mind. Done by by what we talk. This is on. They want to, yeah, I mean, I haven't gone for that, but because they want, they have done it for 30 years. So it was a regular event every year. I always got free food, small, but before the cafe, I asked for the next one because uh, my food always, a lot of people come. Actually, not me only, I think, I don't know who, oh, you know Dana? This is a quick scan, yeah. As game designer and as possibly self-published game designer, yeah, meaning you don't have a publisher with a wide distribution network to support you. Unlike if you give a game to us, as money to print for for ex example, you print yourself. Are you guys aware of what are the downstream commitment you need to put in, or do you do you expect to just publish a game, call up a few working cafe at FGS, and you will sell a few thousand copies? All right. This is where I want to call out to Chun Yan. I don't know whether she's on the stream now. Yeah. But you know how much effort she put in to push Kati Lima when it first came out. I think she was literally at every single event, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, both, both, both exhibition, this la, that la, yeah. in this la, everywhere she was, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how many miles she had tra traveled around Malaysia carrying. And she does carry some of your games, right? She also asked anybody even to bring her games, she bring it along on her so-called tour, yeah? She has slowed down a little bit, you know? So, but that is unfortunately the commitment you have to put in if you are self-publishing. Yeah. Because no one else will promote it for you, you know? Correct? Right? Because it's all publishing company on the label, right? Not AEG or LO or whatever, then they have a network to blast it to you, right? So, so that goes back to your point, right? You you can have the events, you can have the space. Are you prepared? Yeah. I, I, I didn't give the advice. Every time they come to the booth, I was sad because they asked me, uh, can they buy the game? <laughs> I didn't have a game to share. I don't. But I showed I, I show my game. Lah. For, well, for training, for training, so they can. But, but for the, the one mindset, uh, when I said that the working competition, because I saw during that event, I think about four primary or secondary schools actually designed a game, uh, three university, and they want me to become judge. Sometimes, by attending that, we can propose to have a working competition, but the designer that six, seven, become the judge for that school's project. It's, it's a, it's a, uh, I don't know to call it PR and relationship, so actually they call us again for free. Come, come. <laughs> I know, it's 20,000 there, we don't have money to pay for a book and not the library. But if it's free, we maximize it. Uh. I mean, I, I have a channel which which I hope, I mean, yeah, I, mean, I shared a bit early, uh. I know, but, but just for you to know. I hope that I can be more. <laughs> well, you have the you're, you're in the group, so like if you want to coordinate through the group, it's possible. Uh, I'm not the only one coordinating. I, I shouldn't be the only one coordinating this kind of thing because like yeah, exactly. you you know like I I'm only one person. I get bottleneck. Like next week, after me, I also cannot make it. 
Uh, so if you want to coordinate that, that people are free to join you. Mean, mean, uh, is it possible for some people to post there? To yeah, I mean, like, it's, a, it's a Facebook group, you can post yeah. one. Yeah. It's just that um, I, what I do is mostly uh, I have the historical records of all the, the marketing material and I organize it up for me. That's mostly what I do now. Who's writing this? Uh, I don't know yet. Uh, actually, Fendi here did. I got it in my bunting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can, can, can. I think, yeah, one day, yeah, I'll be around, but yeah, even that was a cancer or <laughs> fail to attend. Yeah, mate, yeah, as long as someone is, uh, I'll message the group, I'll put you in the group, uh, uh, and someone will coordinate. Some of you also say you want to potential event opportunities. Also, you can give things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, uh, uh, sort of confirm and date. And the G1 is not an event yet, it's more of a, a reconnection with them. Because I, this time, I know I've been in contact with them, not to get it, I become judge for some of the, the things game design and like that. But I, I, I personally want to reconnect with them now, not only saying that I'm the only designer. I want to tell them that there are many designers that want to do it. I think it's, uh, I know at the moment I can say that lah. Uh, I know they have become very useful. They even have slots in TV. They even have slots in radio. I, I, I was in radio once with their CEO or CEO or something. That then, uh, during uh, an expo, so they, they could, they feel bored of talking about, uh, you know, the, the other innovation doing, uh, uh, compact buah kelapa, uh, not, uh, kayu basikal and then, but, but nobody talking about games. So, so they have slots TV and radio. So I'm, I'm selling the, the potential, but, but for the Yes and University of Malaysia, I, I've been close to them, but after this, I know that this last few years, I also not close with a lot of people. <laughs> uh, so, so I, I want to not run again. So I think, think the community has been growing. So Yes and Malaysia is the one that I have to say they will be very helpful, especially if they come in like, like, like I think a lot they feel, but when they so it's bigger, I think they, they will learn that. Yeah. You take up, you also take up, you go promote some, some help promote some games if you go and learn to form a publishing company. Okay, so how? We are, thank you for your time, we are all around that 20 minutes, sorry about that. I uh, hope you have gained useful insights today. I uh, hope you haven't frightened the two new people from <laughs> game inside. Ah, this is not what you gotta do. Then. <laughs> so, uh, anything else? If not, next week, just to plug in, it's at our family. Yeah, uh, uh, have a nice place. place. Have a, yeah. we, 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 we have a question. Is F and D short or E and D? It was coincidentally, it was uh, <laughs> a stand for fun and decent. <laughs> so many fun things are not decent. So many decent things are not fun. <laughs> so only this, this board gaming can, can mix both. <laughs> <laughs> so that will be our family who at this place next week. Saturday, right? Uh, what's the I, I, I have a lot of tables and uh, I will allocate I think, two tables. And it's not, not, not for next week, yeah, of course, unlimited, but uh, on a regular basis, uh, two tables for, for, for designer to test. So that's, I will take it for free, but of course, if this is the testing table, if you decide to go up there and play uh, Art Nova, <laughs> <laughs> they will pay. They will pay. <laughs> the oh, yeah. We are free testing for our next game based on Art Nova. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, our table is big, so when we test, you, you, you definitely still have space for your notes. If you are going to take notes for your whatever the accessories your your game. But I just want to give a short plug in here because we haven't touched this card. But I just want to mention something here. You know, card game mechanism. I presume the question is about what are the mechanism that is in card games, right? Now I just have a question here, right? Now we have an extensive games library. We're talking about play sets, yeah. I believe my 
sell now has over 3,000 games there, right? So, which means that it covers a lot of mechanics, journals, categories, and so on. Would there be interest if you hold workshops to play through specific mechanics, uh, whether, whether the mechanic is on, or option mechanics, worker placement, and have a discussion around those things? Would that interest game designers and so on? Yes. Okay, if, if, yeah. There's something that we have been going on in our mind, because at the end of it, the core is, of course, to be able to build on the fundamentals. Yeah. This is not limited to game design. Yeah, yeah, correct. Because, because we, we find out that we have a large library of games. Some of the games are OOP, you can't probably even not, not the current batch of games and so on, right? So, but, but those games teach us, in fact, some of the not so good games teach you more, I suppose. It doesn't work, why not, right? Rather right, than the perfect games that aren't over, they probably doesn't teach you much because it's in a perfect blend. Right? But the games when there are certain things that doesn't work, you know, if you're able to be able to critically think through why it doesn't work, then you will be able to avoid that mistake. Okay. Uh, I think more of that we will, we will roll up certain things. Um, Can I just add to that? Like, these are like mechanisms, you know, it's uh, always a process of discovery. Like, just keep on playing more and more games and thinking critically about them. Yeah. In fact, you, you know what I've been mostly I've been inspired by recently? Poker. Poker. Yeah, poker. Poker is a really good, like Texas Hold'em is a really good game. Except <laughs> so you, you have to be prepared a lot. Like, the mind games are, they're crazy. That's a good game thing. Huh? That's a good game thing. <laughs> Alright, thank, thank you. I know you have those who want to stay there and chit chat. Uh, welcome to do that. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Yeah?